So what's also cool about DHEA when well, it's optimal, so we sex hormones, your testosterone. So huge. And what we've covered in the previous videos, the light clamps, they're very easy to correct. Done a video about that. Link below. The heavy clamps, the functional framework shows you how to solve this problem and get your gut health back, fix your omega index. And I spelled omega wrong there. Cool. And also optimal nutrient status, which is huge. And then we talk about food sensitivities in the previous video, mold, and we spell it weird here in Australia. For some reason, we put a U on that son of a bitch. We talked about the elimination diet, heavy metals, things like that. So today, we're going to cover how to become emotionally just switched on and handle stress like a boss. So both emotional and physical resilience locked in. So as I spoke about in the previous videos, we know that DHEA is high in the morning and low in the afternoon. So clearly in sleep, we're making a lot of DHEA. And it also helps you thrive during and after stressful experiences. And it's an important thing that I'll talk about towards the end about stressful experiences after you felt like you've screwed up or you've embarrassed yourself. If you don't do this, that's not going to be good for your anxiety. So we'll talk about that as we progress. Now, the important thing to understand, my friends, is you've got a stress sensor for metabolic stress. When your hormones are unbalanced, you've got too much inflammation and cortisol, we are shit out to lunch. We're never going to be optimal. And that's going to exacerbate emotional stress because when cortisol and inflammation are up, we feel like shit. It's basically a message our body's saying, get home to the cave and recover. We feel like shit. So we get social anxiety. We just want to go home and forget our worries. But we reach for the wrong food, we have food sensitivities, we don't sleep, we have booze and pizza, and we're back in for round two. So let's talk about how to correct this. So as we now know, and I've spoken about this a lot here on YouTube recently, high blood glucose, right? And there's an optimal range, and then there's a standard range. The standard range is still no good. We can do better. We must do better. Because when glucose is a bit too high throughout the day, it's going to trigger inflammation and cortisol. Why is that a problem? Because when we've got too much cortisol, the, the precursor, remember, DHEA has a precursor, ACTH, it's released 40 times a day over 24 hours, and it's going to make cortisol because when inflammation is up it must make cortisol so you can forget about dhea and testosterone and your sex hormones so basically in a nutshell we want to fix the stress in our body if there is stress in the body and very importantly the older we get the worse this becomes because our cells accumulate these junk proteins and they're really slow to work but you can clean the junk proteins out when you trigger autophagy if you want to know more about that drop a comment below so as you can see here the brain is going to make crh which is going to trigger acth inflammation and cortisol and stress it can't go here we are shit out of luck it's going to come over here to cortisol until you fix the metabolic stress and your old testosterone, my friends, she's going to be shut down too. So cortisol, then inflammation over here, insulin and glucose. So you can see how detrimental that insulin and glucose and all of these issues are. Like we've got to fix this because, importantly, you've got a pulse generator called the gonadotropin releasing hormone system that sends pulses of LH and FSH to the testes for testosterone every two hours. So you're missing out on the big T. So you're packing on the weight, you don't feel very good, and this exacerbates your anxiety, and then we're going to have low DHEA. So when DHEA is down, testosterone is down too. So that's the setup, my friends. And, you know, for a lot of people, they want to be over here. They want to feel love and happiness and joy and be excited for life. However, unfortunately, that only happens about 20% of the time for most people because they are working for the weekend. They've got nothing to look forward to. 
And I know that sucks. Like that was me for a very long time. I feel blessed to be able to do what I do now. But it took me 50 fucking years to get to this place. You know, it takes hard work to get there. And if you've got no energy, you've got no get up and go, you've got no drive, we're handicapped. So why do that to ourselves? And unfortunately, 80% of the time, people are living in distress, anxiety, anger, and fear. We're just frustrated. We're sick and tired of it. But that's causing the dysfunction we want to move away from because it's shutting down DHEA. It's shutting down testosterone. We feel like garbage. So we've got to be smarter than our dumbass brain a lot of times. So one thing that's really important to understand, as I mentioned in the previous video, the medical system, they neglect this condition, which is sleep disorders due to nutrition and digestive issues because we've got food intolerances, allergies, and also sensitivities. So in the previous video, I talked about testing your foods out with the IgG, IgA test. Like, check this out. This is one of our recent clients. So if he has, let's say, asparagus and carrots and celery in one sitting, He's got chronic inflammation. He won't sleep. His testosterone comes down. His DHEA comes down. So as I mentioned on the, the third video there, we've got to really take care of these food sensitivities. So that video is linked below. So I won't talk about that anymore. Now, I also talked about heavy metal toxicity because that can cause a lot of stress and inflammation in your body. Why? Because it absolutely crushes the master antioxidant glutathione here. And I talked about all of these diseases. So pause that. Have a good read over that because that's huge when you've got low glutathione because you've got too much stress and inflammation. It's a big problem. And then we've also got issues like mold toxicity. This is one of our recent clients and one of them here called Xerolone. Over five times, sorry, three times the, the levels that you should have it. And guess what? It has a high affinity to the androgen receptor, so it mimics estrogen. So he can never have high testosterone until he fixes this problem. And guess where this ZEA is? It's in cheap-ass food, big food, big problem. It's in oats, peanuts, it's in the water, so you don't filter your water, you're in trouble. Wheat, soybeans, barley, rice, maize. It's everywhere, and guess what? They feed this cheap shit to cheap animals. Then we eat this stuff, and we get a dose of it. So grass-fed is definitely a great option there. And it causes these mold toxins, digestive issues, reproductive toxicity, immune system issues, metabolic abnormalities, and also weight gain. Dr. Anthony J., my good friend, wrote about it in East Regeneration here, you know, when you Eight years ago, he talked about it. It's in rice, bread, puffed corn, snacks, wheat flour, right? It's a potent, right? Dr. J, five-year PhD, potent estrogenic. It's going to shut you down hard. So how do you get rid of this crap? You use binders. The ones that I use is humeric acid. I also use clays and charcoal. That's it. Set and forget. Make sure you know what you're doing when it comes to taking these because they can deplete you of mineral status. So if you want to have no more information about that, drop a comment below. Happy to help. We talked about the genome. So you, you can have foods that you're sensitive to with your, with your DNA. And that video was linked below. And that's huge, absolutely huge. And I'll just play you one of the videos from there, which is about lectins. Some people are sensitive to lectins. And we've tested hundreds and hundreds. And our 65% are sensitive. While it's true, some people have a high sensitivity, some people have a low sensitivity, but if you've got a sick gut, and most people do, then you have to avoid lectins like the plague. Listen to Dr. J speak about lectins. The lectin is a big one. That's a fourfold higher risk of heart disease, even as a plus minus, the S-E-L-E. -E. Yeah, that's um, huge. Yeah. Yeah, so lectins are going to trigger a lot of damage to the arteries and damage to the gut. I would recommend avoiding grains, yeah. you know. Grains, grains are the, yeah. the major source of lectins. Yeah. And his gut's very sensitive to grains also, to gluten. And, he, and he's got a thyroid gene that comes up later with gluten as well. So I would say just take off the grains, you know. And they tell us the grains are really healthy. Well, maybe not. 
So we test for everything. We leave nothing a chance. We're taking everything off your dinner, breakfast and lunch table to decrease performance and make you feel like shit. And what we want to do is increase performance. So like if I came on here and said, take this supplement, do this, that'll boost your DHEA. Do you think it'll do it? After watching all the videos that I've done so far, do you think that it's really going to work? See, a lot of people have no clue. It's taken me a lot of time. I've worked with experts in hormones, genetics, food sensitivity testing, genome testing. And if you don't fix all of these issues, and quite simply, the older we get, the worse it becomes. And then we're told this can bullshit story about that's a normal part of aging, which is all bullshit. So that's the genome there. Now, the gut, right? It all, all health starts in the gut. And I've talked about this in the previous video. It is absolutely huge. If you've got a sick gut, you will be sick. The older you get, the worse it becomes. Because it's going to drive all of this brain dysfunction when you've got a sick gut. So anhedonia, depression, anxiety, avoidance. It's like, fuck it, man. I just, I just, I just want to go home. I'm sick of this shit. Oh, I can't deal with this shit right? you got emotional dysregulation and you fatigue. It's like, oh, geez, man, I need a fucking coffee. I need a cookie. I need a cake. And then you're triggered, like, um, you're fearful, and then you've got your hypervigilant and you're, you're worrying about every damn thing. And guess what else happens? Your neurotransmitters just absolutely tank. Dopamine <laughs> goes to the floor. Serotonin <laughs> goes to the floor, but it's replaced with cortisol because you've got inflammation right here. And the one thing that cortisol does is it tries its hardest to block inflammation, but because it's just rampant and it's chronic, can't do it. So you get cortisol resistance. So that's how the gut really screws you up. And like you can do GI testing and we don't really give anybody any information about healing their gut because we have learned that everybody is so different. So different. Dude number one, this is the protocol, about six months. Dude number two, two to three months, completely different. Like, as you can see here, this is the species, like, bit too high, way too high, all of this shit low, and only one in the butter zone there. So if you start supplementing these ones and this one, you know, that's more dysbiosis. You're moving everything in the wrong direction. And if you're not supplementing these keystones one here, like acomantia, Shit out of luck. You really have to understand what your gut is doing. All right. Now, on to the second part. So this is the mindset training part of it, the mindset part of it. So there's two kinds of stress, two kinds. Remember, you've got the metabolic stress, which will drive cortisol up and cause distress, emotional stress, and fatigue. And cortical inhibition, so you got arrhythmias in your heart rate. Your amygdala's got the juice, so it physically grows larger, and its activation potential is higher, so you're always triggered, worrying, hypervigilant, and you feel like shit, and you can't think. You've got decreased blood flow to your moneymaker. You've got ums and ahs. You, don't, you can't articulate yourself, and you feel like an idiot. And this is what's happening to a lot of people because they've got stress in the body. So what we want to do is hop across the tracks here, and also you got high blood pressure too, right? Cortisol clamps down, high blood pressure. Less blood flow in your pipes there, basically. So what we want to do is hop across here to eustress. So when your heart rate is elevated at 120 like it is like for me right now because I'm coaching, I'm doing this shit that I love, you feel good. You can articulate. You can think through. You don't have ums and ahs. And a big thing that I've talked about multiple times on my channel here, high blood glucose. And remember, this optimal range, which is 85 and below fasting or 4.7 in Australia, our beloved system says, nah, 100's cool. And I've spoken about that on multiple videos. Heart disease increases, your testosterone tanks because it's causing oxidative stress and inflammation. TNF-alpha, interleukin Interleukin-6, interleukin-18 levels to go up. And then it causes, you know, it just completely tanks the way your brain works. And you're feeding the beast. You're feeding the amygdala. So you're irritable. You're frustrated. You're anxious. And then when the system cools off, you're tired. 
you're depressed, you're inattentive, and you're bored, so you reach out on the social media, try to get a bit of a pick-me-up, but it doesn't truly work. So the great news is with specific training, this is the size of the amygdala over eight weeks, significant reductions in the size of the amygdala. We're not done yet. The hippocampus, which is working memory, memory consolidation, all the things that we need, and emotional regulation increases. The temporal parietal junction, which is perspective taking, which is huge in today's life, an open mind about everything that you hear, and empathy and compassion, which the world certainly needs more of. Like more research here, when you've got too much cortisol release, the amygdala gets larger, the hippocampus gets smaller. So we want to flip that hippocampus, temporal parietal junction, and the amygdala smaller, the other ones larger. And when you get stress hormones in the butter zone here, it stimulates testosterone production. So a lot to be said about getting this right. Now, one important concept is your brain has hardware, like the amygdala, right? The big amygdala, high activation potential. Potential, you, you triggered all the time emotionally, you worry a lot, you're hypervigilant. And we've got other brain regions for motivation, empathy, compassion, all of these brain circuits that we can strategically target for upgrades. So you can upgrade your brain hardware and then you can upgrade the software, your worldviews, your beliefs, all of these things. Now, this video I'm about to play is from Professor Schumann just speaking to the fact that we have brain circuits that drive emotions. Listen to this. You do indeed have circuits in your brain for resentment, whether you like it or not. Um, we all do. And uh, some people just, those circuits are more robust than others. But the remarkable thing is one can shift these circuits in the direction that I think most people would like, which is more sense of well-being and motivation and less uh, resentment and fear, literally. And what's really cool about this study also is that the interventions are only five minutes long. It's incredible. Did you catch that? So we've got brain circuits and the interventions are five minutes long. It doesn't take a lot of time. However, it takes weeks and weeks and weeks to elicit an effect. And most people are conditioned by Big Pharma for a magic pill. Magic pills don't work. We have to work at this. That's the bottom line. If you want to have a strong mindset, we have to, we must work at this. It is imperative that we do. We've got to be on top of this because, my friends, there, there's been a lot of research now with functional magnetic resonance imaging, fancy way of saying looking at the brain working in real time. Listen carefully. The brain represents people as the mental states they habitually experience. If you always experience anxiety, your brain literally rewires the hardware for anxiety, so you always feel anxious. So the great news is we can upgrade the hardware to shrink the amygdala, lower that son of a bitch's action potential down, and increase the hardware to kick ass in life. And that's really, really helpful. So listen to this. This is a neuroscientist, and she did brain imaging of the amygdala when they were doing meditation. So meditation is something you can use, and I'll give you a lot of tools here today to be able to do this work, upgrade your hardware so you can kick ass in life and show up like a boss. Another region we identified was the amygdala. And the amygdala is the fight or flight part of your brain. And here we actually found a decrease in gray matter. And what was interesting was that the change in gray matter was correlated with the change in stress. So the more stress reduction people reported, the smaller the amygdala became. Smaller the amygdala became. So that's what that's the whole goal, right? Get less triggered. So here's how I think through this. But just to emphasize the point, I've got three videos to play, very short videos. And this is going to make a lot of sense. You'll be able to connect the dots looking back in your life when you understand this. So food can cause anxiety when you've got food sensitivity. So listen to my to Dr. Dattis. Acid sequences are important. The reason I wanted to share this with you is uh, the goal of trying to understand food sensitivities. When these people walk into the healthcare, people think they're crazy. They go, there's no way that eating a piece of bread is gonna make you dizzy. I think, I think, it's, I think it's in your head. I think it's psychological. There's no way, for example, eating food is gonna cause you anxiety uh, or eating a specific food protein is gonna cause you anxiety. That those things can happen specifically because of cross-reactivity. 
All right. So that can happen. Now, food sensitivities through the immune system is different than DNA food sensitivities. So the video is linked below, video number three on this. And that's set in stone. You can't change that, but you can test for that. So you can check out that video. So this is Dr. J just speaking to the fact that our genes can predisp- predispose <laughs> to anxiety. So check this out. Because of this gene? Right. So therefore, it could trigger more anxiety. All right. So we've got to get a handle on that because it's, it's really difficult to work on the mindsets if we've got these issues. So what really happens is this. So like you eat a food that you're sensitive to and it causes this, this change in your physiology. So you've got triggers. So this can be a mindset or this can be a food can trigger you emotionally so that creates energy in motion like this here happiness or over here anxiety that triggers so you don't necessarily feel um, have anxious thoughts you feel anxious so your physiology changes then you'll have anxious thoughts then that triggers more of these thoughts that lowers your activation potential because you say well screw it i'll do it later now it's not a good time and then you get into this positive feedback loop you worry a lot more That strengthens your belief. I'm an anxious person. That updates your character traits, and that becomes your personality over time. And your hardware and your brain changes to reflect your dominant state. As we now know, these findings demonstrate that the brain represents people as the sum of the mental states they experience a lot of the time. So that's how it all plays out. So, Raoul, what can we do to fix these issues So the first thing we have to think about is we have to change our relationship to what stress means. So when we're, when, when we are doing things that we don't really want to do, we've got a big problem because that's going to increase stress hormone production, cortisol. So you're like, oh, fuck, I just don't feel like doing it, but I'll do it anyway. That's not good. That's terrible. In fact, listen to Huberman positively impact the neurochemicals that are released into your system. The fact that you are doing this deliberately and your knowledge that you are making the choice, that it's you that's deciding to put yourself through this discomfort, has been shown to create a very different and positive effect on things like dopamine, on things like anti-inflammatory markers uh, in your immune system, et cetera, compared to if someone pushes you into an ice bath. So we have to really reframe and say, I have to do this, right? Because that's negative, that's a distress, that's cortisol, that's lowering sex hormone production and increasing inflammation to, you know, I get to do this. I'm trying to better my life. I'm trying to become a stronger person. So you have to reframe what stress means. And that's quite simply a growth mindset. You grow through stress. So distress is this shit, which we don't want. The amygdala's got the juice and it's physically grown larger. We can't think. We don't want to do shit. Over here, this is positive stress, you stress. You've got increased cortical activity. You don't have arms and arms. You can think through, create solutions. And the amygdala's got a little bit of juice and you've got great heart rhythm right there. Now, this excerpt from a podcast of Huberman with... Uh, a legend you'll see here in a moment. He, he speaks about a brain region. So these brain circuits that I'm always talking about here, we can make them physically larger. This one in particular is called the anterior mid cingulate cortex. Listen carefully to this, and I'll show you how to put this together. This is Huberman. Check it out. There's a brain structure called the anterior mid cingulate cortex. As we pointed out before, that's a noun. It's a name. It doesn't mean anything. We could call it the, the cookie monster. Right. But what's interesting about this brain area is there are now a lot of data Mm -hmm. in humans, not some mouse study, showing that when people do something they don't want to do, like add three hours of exercise per day or per week, or when people who are trying to diet and lose weight resist eating something. Right. When people do anything that they, and this is the important part, that they don't want to do. Right. It's not about adding more work. It's about adding more work that you don't want to do. Yes. This brain area gets bigger. Yep. Now, here's what's especially interesting about this brain area to me. And by the way, I'm only learning this recently Mm -hmm. because it's new data, but there's a lot of it. The anterior mid-cingulate cortex is smaller in obese people. Mm -hmm. It gets bigger when they diet. Mm -hmm. It's larger in athletes. Mm -hmm. It's especially large or grows larger in people that see themselves as challenged and overcome some challenge. And in people that live a very long time, 
Mm -hmm. this area keeps its size. Mm -hmm. In many ways, scientists are starting to think of the anterior mid-cingulate cortex not just as one of the seats of willpower, right. but perhaps actually the seat of the will to live. See, now we're talking. And when I learned about the anterior mid-cingulate cortex, I was like almost out of my seat. And I've been in the neuroscience game since I was 20. Now we're the we're same talking. age. And I was so pumped because I've heard of the amygdala, fear, prefrontal cortex, it's planning and action. I could tell you every brain area and every, I teach neuroanatomy to medical students. But when I started seeing the data on the anterior mid-cingulate cortex, I was like, whoa, this is interesting. Yep. And all the data point to the fact that we can build this area up, yep. but that as quickly as we build it up, if we don't continue to invest in things that are hard for us, that we don't want to do, that's the part that feels so Goggin-esque yes, to me that we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Like if you love the ice bath, yeah, I love the ice bath. And you go from one minute to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Your anterior mid cingulate cortex did not grow. None. But if you hate the cold water, mm -hmm. If you're afraid of drowning mm -hmm. and you get into water and put your head under, yep. then your anterior mid and survive, then the anterior mid cingulate cortex gets bigger. But if you don't do it the next day, or if you do it the next day and you enjoy it, because mm -hmm. hey, hey, I did it yesterday. Woohoo. Mm -hmm. Happy me. Merry Christmas, as That's you right. would say. Merry Christmas. Guess what? The anterior mid cingulate cortex shrinks again. Yep. So he went on to say that there's a neuroscientist that got electrodes and it, they pushed it into that brain region. And he said to that to the, the people that he's pushing this electrode in the brain region, how do you feel? Feels like there's a storm coming. I'm going to be challenged. Does that scare you? No, I want to go through that storm. And he said that if he pulled it out like two millimeters, it all changed. Didn't want to do it. So that brain region is powerful. So if we do the things we don't want to do, even when we don't feel like doing them, that brain region gets larger. So how do we start to make that brain region larger? Well, what I help my clients with, and I do this myself, every time I don't feel like doing something, I fucking do it anyway, because I know this brain region is going to get large. I put in the work, and that's why I'm getting the results that I've got in my life. So one thing you can do is what's called VILPA, which is short exercise bout. So I'll give, you, I'll give you three strategies right here, and it's a twofer, or it's actually a threefer. I'll play these short videos from Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and it'll explain how powerful this short exercise is at the beginning part of your day, especially for optimizing glucose here, right? At the beginning part of that, it's going to give you more energy for the rest of the day. So listen to these couple, these few videos. Exercise seems to help correct some of the bad effects of sleep loss. And right. I've measured this in myself and mm. there's studies on it mm -hmm. with glucose regulation. And when I was a new mother, I was getting no sleep. Right. And I was measuring my glucose with a continuous glucose monitor. I was you know, getting all that data. And it was night and day difference. I mean, it was so obvious and so repeatable that there's times when I, when I was a new mother, when I was like, I can't even exercise. But then I had that data and that was like, even if I'm like just dog tired, if I exercise, I'm back to me. The more tired you are, yeah. the more you should work out. In fact, when you're not tired, that's when you should not work out. It's right. like, it's actually the opposite. <laughs> yes. um, it's and then it gets you back to baseline. Baseline. Yeah. Or um, even above. So that's cool. And the way that you want to use it in the morning part of the day is just use this short exercise. Listen to this. There's something called vigorous intermittent lifestyle physical activity. VILPA, it's, it's somewhat similar to exercise snacks, um, but it takes advantage of everyday sort of situations to get your heart rate up high and to do some high intensity exercise. So for example, instead of you have to take, to, they take the stairs every day to work. Well, instead of walking up the stairs, you sprint. Um, you're getting your heart rate high and, um, you know, just three to four minutes a day of this vigorous intermittent lifestyle physical activity has been shown to be associated with a 25 to 30% reduction in overall mortality risk. Um, when that VILPA durations increase to about nine minutes a day, it's associated with a 50% reduction in cardiovascular rate related mortality and a 40% reduction in cancer related mortality. Massive benefits just right there. So it's going to reg it's going to keep your blood sugar optimized and it's going to keep insulin at healthy levels. So when insulin is at healthy levels, you drop more body fat too. So there's a lot of benefits to it. Now the, the other thing that you can do is 
this here, like this, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy how simple and easy these strategies are. So listen to this. You guys, I wanted to share a new study with you that was just published last month that found that doing 10 body weight squats every 45 minutes was better at improving blood sugar regulation than a single 30 minute walk over an eight and a half hour period of prolonged sitting. So this is very relevant. Many of us sit at our desk for many hours while we're working throughout the day. And I really feel like this study has important implications because it shows that these brief sort of bursts of intense physical activity, so they're often called exercise snacks, can really have a profound impact on metabolic health. And I know I've talked about exercise snacks a lot, but it really does highlight how easy is it to get up and do 10 body weight squats every 45 minutes. And you know, part of the reason for this is because when you're doing that intense physical activity, it is activating transporters on your muscle called glucose transporters, specifically GLUT4 transporters, to come up to your cell surface in the muscle and allow glucose to be taken into the muscle better. And this happens better the more intense the physical activity. And that happens to be because you're producing lactate when you're doing more intense physical activity. And lactate is actually a signaling molecule that's increasing those glucose transporters. So again, very relevant. People can like 45 minutes, every 45 minutes, 10 body weight squats. And this is going to keep your blood glucose much at a much healthier level. That's going to keep cortisol down and keep inflammation down. So really simple strategies there. Now let's talk about the, the couple of final tools that I'll talk about here today. So the way that I treat the day is like a boxing match. I treat it like a boxing match. So you've got these high activation states where you're producing a lot of stress hormones, but it's you stress, which is beneficial, but you've got to cool that off. You can't stay there because what happens, say 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you're going, you're crunching, you're, you're working really hard, you're, you're told by the gurus to push it and fight, but you're not using active recovery. So your stress hormones are up and up and up and up and you come crashing back down and you don't sleep. And when you don't sleep, your sex hormone production is down, your DHEA is down, and you have to push and fight the next day instead of waking up with a lot of vigor, energy, and enthusiasm to attack the day like a beast. So like this video that I'm doing now, I don't know, it's probably close to 40 minutes long. So this is what I call an all, all trading cycle here. So anywhere from, say, 10 minutes to even 90 minutes is an all-trading cycle. So you go in, high activation state, and then you sit down for three to five minutes and do breath work. So every time you do a high activation activity, you do the breath work. And according to Huberman, I've tested this out with myself over years and years and years, and also the people that we help, it works profoundly. It's what Huberman calls cyclic sighing. So quickly listen to this. For the sake of stress reduction around the clock and for the sake of improving sleep and mood, the most effective practice of the four practices that we examined was the cyclic sign. So the cyclic sign there, you just do it for three to four minutes every time you come out of a high energy state, and that's going to allow you to go back into rest and digest in for round two. So just treat the day like a boxing match. You toggle back and forth between these high activation states rest and recovery, high activation states, rest and recovery, and you'll get to the end of the day, providing providing you don't have that metabolic stress, food sensitivities, you're going to feel much better, your sleep's going to be better, your stress hormone production will be optimal, and you will recover from your workouts, from the day, from emotional stress, from everything. So that's one tool that you can take to the bank and cash in. Now, another tool that you can use is meditation, and a lot of people struggle with meditation. However, there's a lot of research behind it. So what I do is I use the breath technique from, say, 8 o'clock to about 4 p.m., and then I use what's called open awareness meditation. And a great app to get that's been done by neuroscientists is what's called FitMind, and it teaches you how to do that. So it's very easy and intuitive to use. So that's an app that you can download called FitMind. And again, just for the sake of emphasis here, I use it in the afternoon because I want to calm the system down and use open open awareness meditation to calm myself down, which paves the way for great sleep, which paves the way for a really high activation day. 
the next day. So take it to the bank and start cashing in and all of this stuff here. And you can also get this thing from the heart math, which has got a biofeedback. I've got one of them here. So basically you hook it up to your ear and it reads to your smartphone there and you, you use your breath to do this and it gives you feedback to say that you've got great heart rate variability. So you can train that up too. So that's the Heart Math Institute as well. So let's just cover what we've talked about here today. Now, you know, as I've mentioned in all these videos there, the way that you get through this and know exactly where your metabolic stress is, is your exposome, your genome, your microbiome, and your food sensitivities. You want to help with that. There's information below to book a call with me, and I can walk you through that and show you how we can potentially help you get back to health. So I've got other videos all about that. And if you want to know where they are, drop a comment below, and I'll link you to them, because that's the only way you're going to know definitively where you're busted inside, and it will give you a framework to fix your busted V8 engine so you can retune it, and rebuild it and slap a supercharge on that son of a bitch. So basically, the tools that I've given you here today is reframe stress. You know, we've got to do the things we've got to do to get to the next level of our life. If we do those short bouts of exercise in the morning, we're going to optimize blood sugar and insulin. And if we use rest and digest, so we go into those high activation states, do the breath work, then we get to the end of the day, we do a bit of open awareness meditation. Only five minutes that takes. We're a long step in the right direction. So all these tools that I'm giving you, you got to put in the work. And the great news is you're not going to feel like doing it, but what do we talk about here with Huberman in the anterior mid cingulate cortex? That brain region that helps you do challenges and rise to these challenges gets stronger, which is so, so important. I think that's one of the most important things I've learned in neuroscience to date the anterior mid cingulate cortex. I want mine to be huge. I want to kick ass. I want to rise up and just thrive and build a legacy for my family because family for me is everything, absolutely everything. And I'm, I'm sure it is for you too. So that is the final video here. If you got any, any questions or you want to comment, drop them below and I'll see you on the next one.